Kudo bleeding. Kudo with a zero, but Kudo zero. All right, and not with the zero. It is the Red Protoss player team. Gravity is poison. People that put zeros in their names in like place of O's are so much cooler than people that don't. Oh, they are. You have so many cool little things like that, like X X X X X Noob Slayer X X X X X. <laughs> it just makes it so much cooler. You have to have more X's in there. Yep. Right off the bat, we see this very early scout from Poison, which is not too uncommon. I feel like I see Protoss is either going this scout right after gate or waiting much later into the game. But I do like this early scout because Zergs can 13, 14 pull you. Thankfully for Poison, Kudo's not doing this. Kudo's going to be going, I think, a hatch gas pool. Quick. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Hatch gas pool. That's what it looks like. Taking that base, actually, that is inside of his own. So I'm wondering... If he's going to be going for that early third, or is he going to try to do some kind of crazy two base aggression? Like, I don't see that much two base aggression against Protoss as much anymore. Uh, with well positioned pylons, it's a little bit more difficult to do it, but, you know, it still can happen. Uh, I don't know about this map, though. On Dusk Towers, I would not recommend that two base aggression out of Zerg. I have tried it versus Protoss, and it just does not work with that base in the back and Photon Overcharge for pylons. It's very hard to be able to break the Mama Core and the Pocket Natural, so I'd very much advise either a quick third or, you know, maybe a more careful third because you can see some early Adept pushes from Protoss on this map. For now, though, oh, yeah. Kudo's just kind of hanging out. I have seen a lot of Adept pushes actually on this map, but thankfully for Kudo, won't quite be the case at least yet. There's the Cybernetic Core finishing. Yeah. I see a lot of that two gate style too, you know, where if you do see the Zerg going for a really early third base, then, you know, you can kind of get a few drone kills and keep their economy in check while you kind of work on your own. But the reason why I like getting the hatchery on the low ground is because you're able to spread the creep a lot more uh, easily here. And very similar to some maps, I think we actually touched upon it before, where it was... Um, Vani Research Station is one that you think of as well, where some players wouldn't even take that expansion Vani. until so long. Yes, yeah, so late into the game. They would rely off that pocket natural, but of course that was Heart of the Swarm, a much different game now. Probe in the top left is going to be taken down by these Lings. And what I was going to say is I do like seeing that early Adept pressure as you were talking about, but funnily enough, I've never seen the Adept pressure of the early two gate actually get a lot of kills, maybe two to three at the most, but it forces out a whole bunch of lings. Already though, we see this early ling pressure from Kudo, getting them out, making sure there's no pylons around. Metabolic boost is gonna be done around 320 or 330. And for now, yeah, it looks like he's just gonna take a quick third, rely off these lings for some early defense, and most likely will be going into Roach Warren to actually have some chance of beating the Protoss when the big all in comes. <laughs> yeah, it's really a crucial uh, structure here for the Zerg. Getting those Ravagers out allows you to not take as much damage from Immortals if they decide to go for it. And look, Poison dropping down that Robotics facility, but also adding a few Adepts to this zone. So, hmm, I wonder what Poison is going to be going here. You know, she does call herself the DT Queen, but it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing them this game. At least not yet. Robotics facility will be her tech of choice, most likely for either Warp Prism or Immortal. Generally, you'd see in Heart of the Swarm people rushing out those Immortals for defense versus Roaches, but the Warp Prism is much more popular, and with Adepts, you can execute so, so potent drops at, in Zergs. It's just, why not open up with that Warp Prism? I love it, you know? Uh, it's really nice to do, and also secure your third base with it. Uh, Zerg players can try to go ahead and cancel your third base, but if you get a pylon up, that photon overcharge is so much better now because you don't have to wait for your nexus to be completed. You can hold there with uh, the pylon while harassing with the war prism, and if they commit too many of their units, oh man, do you know how many drones can get killed by just even two adepts here? It can get pretty intense here if you uh, you don't have all the units in position. So here we Especially... go. Especially... Especially we'll see an early Twilight Council getting Resonating Glaives. Man, plus 50% attack speed adepts. That is scary. Thankfully, this Overlord actually of Kudo, I believe, spotted that War Prism moving across the map. Don't know if he spotted it, but I know. He did, the Overlord. It, so. If he was paying yeah. attention. Yeah, you're right. If yeah. That, that was, yeah, if, if he was paying attention. By the way, Kudo just added on three more gas. He's going to four and two more in his third. He's going to be up to six gas and on Roach Warren. This is going to be an intriguing push. Oh, there's the Spire being thrown down right now just before that drop moves in. 
Indeed. And, you know, Kudo did not take a fourth base in response to the third base that he did see of Poison. He's droning up his three bases immediately. And uh, what is it? You said he's going to drop a Spire, but, you know, is he, he going to just, just really... Spire, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying, like, is he going to just go into a bunch of Roaches and Ravages and try to push uh, Poison's third as best as he can here? Because I feel like usually you'll see the third base get put down and uh, then kind of go into what it is that you want to do. Uh, once you do confirm that third base out of the Protoss, and there it goes here on the left side, making sure to get some units out beforehand so he doesn't die. If there were to make it. Yeah, Kudo making some roaches and lings, and of course, Ravagers are very a reactionary unit. It's only nine seconds to morph them in, so you can get them if you want. And I have a feeling for Kudo, maybe he's just going to get that fourth base, get up to Hive Tech, and do mm. something from there, because Ultras, Vipers, Brutalords, so, so powerful, Legacy of the Void. But he does have a little bit of an opening, as you were mentioning, of not actually making too many units. If we see a big three base play from Poison, just getting up to two, three Immortals, lots of gateway units, potentially it could push through this if Kudo is not careful to provide adequate defenses. Whoa. Well, Kudo, though, he is so comfortable right now, or at least he feels that way. 75 drones here. He doesn't have to really make too many uh, more. After this, maybe just to saturate the gases at the fourth for now. But if he's going to go in a Roach Heavy style, he might even just prefer the... Uh, oh, no, okay, never mind here, Drenok. <laughs> here come the Mutas immediately. Eight Fourth mutas. attack. Yeah, straight up into Mutas here. And this is going to try to push, uh, or at least pull poison all around the map, or her bases, rather. While he just works on his fourth base, and he could even do another frontal attack while he harasses with the Muta. Honestly, looking at the macro right now of Poison, I love what she's doing with the Warp Prism, but now that the Mutas are out, you might as well just throw that Warp Prism into the trash and get some gateways down at home, get some warp ins. We see three more gateways on the way at Poison's third base. She's trying to make a wall. As you can see, she's got 12, 1300 minerals in the bank, 900 gas. She could do a huge warp in of something like Adepts, whatever. And right now, she's actually relying off Stalker, Zealot, and an Immortal. To be quite frank, yep. it's not a good composition, but maybe it'll be good to delay these Mutas. At the third base, though, could potentially go down easily with that composition. Yeah, this is going to be one of those situations here where how is Poison, you know, she's going to be tested uh, how she can deal with the Mutas. There's no Stargates at all, so it is going to be pure Blink Stalker. And, you know, when the Dark Shrine is done, she can add in a few Archons as well, but... Oh, the Mutas actually have a good amount of time to get a lot of damage done here, and... I don't feel like he's capitalizing as much as he could, but... What is Poison's reaction going to be? Is she going to try to push here, or... Oh, I don't know if she has enough here, Drenok. Ground Army is a little bit delayed from when those mutas engage, but still there's a lot right here for Kudo. Kudo is currently at 97 army supply, the 27, and this is a full retreat back from Poison. We see double time warp. There is no pilots to overcharge at this uh -oh. moment. I think that was a little bit of an oversight for Poison. She needs those pilots at the front to be able to do that, and everything's just going down quickly, and there's a hydrogen off the back of this, I guess, lurkers, and I feel like Kudo was just, I'm going to get a baller economy, and if you can't do anything oh, about but it... but the DTs, the DT queen calls upon her, uh minions here to go ahead and get a lot of damage done but holy crap look at the supply actually changing quite a bit but the third base goes the down the third is down yeah which is so important damage. in legacy of the void and especially we only have 50 workers to be precise 53 for poison to the 70 of kudo and kudo's got a like fourth a fifth i can't even count at this point they're thrown all over the map but he's got the economy he needs, and I don't know even with DTs if Poison can do anything on it. The only thing that Kudo needs to have is Overseers, and he's got that ready. And now, as you can see, look at his bank. Look at his bank, Tempo. It, the bank look is at that beautiful filled, bank. You know, it is great, and he has a fourth base, getting all the gases there as well. He could take another base if he wanted to. He actually did. He goes and he takes this one, and he's going to get the gas there too. So as he goes and he adds on the Lurkers, that's going to be the killing blow. As I uh, feel like the Mutas are just going to be annoying here from now on. They're not really here to get too much done, but uh, <laughs> they're actually gonna. Three Muta hit squad hype. Stargate. Three Muta hit squad. We're going to two cannons, though. It's kind of a very sad day. Those are like the bros of the Zerg. Like, yeah, bro, let's do some kill. Oh, yeah, bro, let's do this. But that's what it is. Base. By the way, um, we have two Stargates coming down for poison. I She can afford it, but she's kind of spreading herself thin, to be quite frank, right here. And with that, only surviving off DTs, she needs to inflict economic damage. Or Kudo's just kind of going to macro up and say, I have a 2,000 mineral bank. If I have injects, I'll just flood you with lings. Yeah, you know, hey, if she was able to keep that uh, the Warp Prism alive 
and you go and you get DTs while that attack is happening, happening inside of the base of your opponent, oh man, that is the best way to try to come back in a game, but... That kind of time is lost. The work for them though earlier. Ever exactly. I said, mm, if only Kudo. she were able to keep it alive. Kudo with the dropper lord in the top left hand corner. And by the way, with those overlord transports, they do have two like longhorn tusks. I just feel like they're big cows or bulls or whatever because they got these huge tusks. But you know, we'll see Kudo going in for another attack at the fourth base of poison. Poison does have a decent amount of DTs, but Kudo has overwhelming numbers. And wow, how many lurkers is that? Seven lurkers are just going to completely over and destroy this force. There's a couple of phoenixes in the air, but the mythos are going to be able to deal with them. And not that much other than that anti air. Yet with this amount of lurkers, you cannot push into it unless you have a significant army supply at the same time roaches yeah. in the main are just annoying all over the place and there's the gg to the g kudo takes game number one this map, it, can, it can work out really well for you but i don't know it's really uh, it's so hard to know I like I'm still waiting for an early dropper lord to take the gold base, the island gold base. That is that I just want to see that. I'm like, come on, guys, you got this, you got this. But oh yeah, nope. man. In the top left hand corner, currently up one to zero, the red zerg player, the one, the only, Kudo. And on the other side, it is the blue Protoss player. She is the one, the only, Poison. As I was mentioning, I really like the Protoss all-ins on this map. One of the biggest things that I still feel like I don't see quite as much is just, you got this bridge in the middle, and it's one force field wide at the choke points. I'd love to see a constant force field in the Protoss, just nullify any of that early aggression, go around, take out those rocks, and then go for the all-in. But generally, with pylon overcharge, I see Protosses take a natural, and you're like, oh, well, this is a really big ramp. Joke's on you, I have pylons. Mm-hmm. That's one of the biggest things I feel like uh, getting those pylons in position and being able to cover as much of your base as you can with these uh, really kind of strategically placed pylons, right? Like the SimCity becomes ever so important here for Protoss nowadays and it's something that you can't neglect. So uh, I think we'll see it. Last time it didn't work out, remember the double time warp and then there weren't really any pylons in range. So it was like, uh oh, I'm in trouble now. If you have like three pylons there instead, you just uh, overcharge that. So I'm really intrigued by the build we're seeing coming out of Poison. She goes for this early two gas, which generally I'm like, okay, you're going to go really quick Stargate or throw down a second gate halfway through that cybernetics core and push a depth. But I feel like she's not quite utilizing that. It's a kind of a heart of the swarm build. You're just mm -hmm. doing a heart of the swarm build and not morphing it to Legacy of the Void, where in this position, Yes, you're, I guess on all run is the one map I'd say that early Zealot is okay because you're afraid of early 14, 13 pools. But mm -hmm. I would so much more favor that Adept right off the bat every single game. And right now we could get a quick Mama Core with that early double gas. There it is. And hopefully Warp Gate's going to happen too. Oh, yeah. Getting the gas that early does allow you to do these kind of things at the price of your economy. So... I guess it's not the worst here. Zalt's actually going to get surrounded right here. He's got to be super careful. Oh. There's enough flanks to kill it. And this is the only defense wow, right the now for the Poison. Micro, Drenok. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Demicro. What are we? Is this like an Italian? <laughs> is this an Italian Zerg player? Oh, Demicro. Oh, Demicro. Demicro and cheese. <laughs> but Demicro look, and is, Italian cheese and pizza. No, this is very important here. Um, Kudo has not taken his third yet. He pulled out of gas quite a bit and uh, went for really earlier speed here. Well, it's the hatch gas. Uh, pool timing of speed but okay he is gonna take his third so just kind of a very safe build you know he's not really taking any chances here and neither is poison i would say this is a very poison. safe build but not adding that aggression with it i do like that move as you mentioned from kudo taking two off gas because Let's say, for example, it was a much more greedy poison, or there was an opening with those lings, which there almost was with the lings killing that zealot. You could have seen a little bit more of a ling flood, some extra larva, larva maybe freed up for that, with pulling off that gas early and getting metabolic boost, but not super prioritize, prioritizing it. Hmm, yeah. It's just kind Never. of the reactionary build. You get a lot, oh my god, there's nothing here to defend against these lings, but yo, the pylon comes to save the day. Gonna be able to. T oh, oh the link gets in! Well, it's got the Stargate. This is really important. It does oh, scout the Stargate. No! Scumbag Zealot Bob, you had one job. 
He had one job, and I still don't think he's going to do it. I think the link can get out, actually. It's a really awkward wall. I love we'll have <laughs> Did to you see. see him? Like, he, like, sidestepped, like, uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, everybody saw that, dude. What the hell? I, I love that. Uh, no, 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 one's, no, no, no one saw that. Uh. <laughs> he, like, immediately stepped to <laughs> the, 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 you know that You know that meme where there's, there's, there's a little cartoon character that's, like, fire in the background, and he's like, Oh, life's good. Nothing's going on, and oh, like yeah, his house like, is burning down. <laughs> like, <laughs> like no one saw the laying in the main. You know, uh, I, I'm curious what Poison is doing with these Phoenix play because I love doing this. The heart of the swarm going Phoenix Colossi. You take a quick third as Protoss, but what? Let's say she went Oracle right off the bat. <laughs> Even though Kudo would have known she was going Stargate, that Oracle there was already a Phoenix out when the Link scouted. The Oracle would have got to the enemy B base, and Kudo would have had no idea about it. We see Spores going up now. It could have gotten a decent amount of damage done. So I feel like the decisions are a little bit more heart of the swarm from Poison. Yeah. Well, uh, on the other side of things, Kudo getting that melee upgrade, going to be going into that heavy. Oh, the Phoenix is getting so low, and it doesn't die. And if it did get uh, killed, then the other Phoenix would be flying solo himself. But here comes the Oracle. The Oracle just kind of a weird, creepy friend. Yeah, right? The third wheel. <laughs> hey, guys! Let me in! <laughs> Oracle's actually going to find a he found spot. spot. He's going to try to kill stuff. Yeah, very nice. Oh, oh but there's so many queens right here for Kudo. Kudo is going to be able to push Poison back. Of course, as Te uh, Tempo mentioned, Kudo is on three bases, but Kudo's only at 51 workers. Kind of an interesting yeah. place right there. Still is still solidifying his economy. Has a very strong lead on Poison. And I do like that he's getting plus one. Generally, against Protoss, we see one of two compositions, either Mass 1-1 one, one Lings, and you mm -hmm. even say that in the late game with Banks, or you see that Roach Ravager, which Mass 1-1 one, one Lings works. I'd prefer Roach Ravager because there's a choke point, which you can cross a vial, but still, mm -hmm. it, you can do Dropper Lords also, which is fun. Them, them long oh lords. yeah, this map is great for it. And we saw him do it in the last game, so maybe he'll decide to do that as well. But Poison, trying to secure that third base. The third base of... Kudo has been up for a while and he just recently saturated it. I was wondering if he kind of stayed at a lower drone count because he was afraid of some kind of Phoenix all in exactly. when Poison yeah. was receiving all of those Phoenixes, but she kind of changed their oh, plan after it was scouted. Hmm. So where do we go from here? Yeah. Where do we go from here? Well, right now we do have Kudo making 24 Lings and is going to be going Ling Hydra. I'm guesses it's going to turn out to be Lurker. Ling, but still there is no Lurker Den on the way, and I like this decision of getting Muscular Augments first for Kudo. Maybe it's a little bit better at defending these early all-ins, but for now, we're not really seeing any all-in from Poison. Again, going Stalker Immortal, that's sadly going to fail versus this Mass Ling. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, Stalker Immortal not going to be good at all versus this kind of style. And oh, the oh, Ling's are going to get the surround! Going to get the surround top of everything. There's no upgrades here for Poison. She's going to get shredded, uh... But uh, seems like just with a few pylon overcharges, well, just one actually, she's able to hold for now. Oh, that was really scary, man. Those are plus one lings right there. I totally thought that they were gonna get red or wrecked. <laughs> yeah, no, they defended. Plus two is on the way, but I'm just gonna remind you, there's no blink. So even when she warps in these stalkers, I feel like this is a very strange thing to do. But there is the wall, beautiful by poison. She will be able to hold in these main lings. Won't get there, but when when she lost all those units and made a big warp in, she warps in stalkers. You, even zealots would have been okay. Just something to actually be able to tank up some of the shots from these lings. But these lings are just gonna pull her apart for right now. We do have pylons for the fitter and overcharges from poison. She is ready. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but where she's going, where is she going to go next out of this? I'm thinking like she's uh, assuming that the mutas are coming, which is why she keeps on morphing or warping in the stalkers. Uh, but it's not going to be uh, mutas at all. It's going to be no, lurkers. No, it's so. them lurkers. Yeah, that's a big deal here because I think she's preparing for that. Stalkers are great against both anyway if you can capitalize on catching them unburrowed and whatnot. But you said yeah. it, man. Blink just started and there's no upgrade. So lurkers are going to be so good here. I am so afraid here for uh, poison. As soon as that all links in this mineral line, so many links in the mineral line. Yes, there's photon overchargers, but there's almost enough. It doesn't matter. I love that. He's like, hold position. This is how you do it, right? Oh, they're not killing anything. Yep. Okay, we're He's gonna like, pull tell it out that. He told that too. zealot, like, yo, in case you didn't know how to hold position, this is how you do <laughs> oh. it. Oh, like, damn, yeah. shots fired, right? But uh, <laughs> shots fired. That'd have been. And great now that zealot like, looks like he's actually never gonna um <laughs> stop holding. Oh no, the zealot, the ramp is like, I'm doing my job. Don't tell me what to do. This is my job. <laughs> <laughs> the disruptor. The disruptor should just kill it. They're like, fine. Just like purify. Purify yourself, man. 
Yo. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> that's too funny. But here come the lurkers, man. Or at least the potential of uh, a lurker attack. Because here we're looking at the tech ramping of uh, Kudo. Going right up to the Ultra Lisk. Yeah, he also has the adrenal glands. And he's been that working was, on his upgrades was, too. Holy he's got moly. a beautiful bank ready. And as you're mentioning, stalkers can blink on top of the lurkers. But even with those blinks, I often see people be like, cool, we can do this. Oh, the lurker drop. But it if drops. you blink on top of them, you just allow them to kill you quicker. I feel like there's no situation where you want to actually jump on top of lurkers. No, right? Like, do you have to have a really... The Longhorn like, drop or upgrade lead or something or, or just have a really good economic lead um but this is scary man here comes the pressure here the creep is already at the front door of poison double pronged lurker drops are going to be happening while there's going to be a frontal attack as well so this is like the perfectly timed uh oh my god here it goes here it comes there's two lurkers, lurkers at the, the third two lurkers in the main oh, 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 oh. It's, it's gonna be a triple pronged attack there's one lurker down poison gets the units out but another lurker is actually gonna intercept at this ramp this is where beautiful. is she gonna go so well thought out by the way yep. i do like what poison's doing now going for the lurker or going for the disruptor stalker which was very common in legacy of the void beta but it's just not gonna go one for one with this composition and also all the mineral lines can't mine now they and can't five, mine. And, and eight ultras are out on the way just throw yep. that out there fyi I mean, just, you know, insult to injury, just like, oh, by the way, this isn't even my real army, ba. You're going to have to get through this field here. It's like the minefield. And after that, there's a dude with the rocket launcher that is going to have to, uh, you know, <laughs> be in point blank range. So good luck. Here it is. Yeah, he here we go. Poison's got a decent position, but still there is zero purification novas. There's the purification novas out, and actually only one is going to pick up a couple queens. But in the end, completely steamrolled with these ultras. GG score screen and that's one of the parts thanks for watching the video please subscribe to support the asl by hitting the button now